be seated. And now as is fitting for those whose sins are part of those ills that come against us, Luther speaks about. For those of us who are sinners, let us confess our sin in silent prayer to God. Let us pray. Amen. God, have mercy on us, for we have sinned. Forgive us. Help us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, for in Christ God has forgiven us. Be seated. We have a reading from 1 Kings 19 this morning. First Kings 19, beginning with the first verse. Ahab, that would be Ahab, king of Israel, told Jezebel, that would be the queen of Israel, all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets. Those would be the prophets of Baal, the Canaanite god that Ahab and Jezebel had brought into Israel, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, so may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It's enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. And from the Gospel of Luke, the 8th chapter, beginning with verse 26 on page 82 in the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Luke 8, beginning with the 26th verse. Then Jesus and the disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. In other words, the other side of the Sea of Galilee, this is Gentile country. As he stepped out on the land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus... He fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, 
What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. And people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Uh, you might remember last Sunday uh, we looked at the storm on the lake, right? And the disciples ask after Jesus calms the storm, who then is this who can control the wind and the waves? This is answering that question again, right? Jesus tells the man to go and tell what God has done for him. And the man goes and tells what Jesus has done for him. Luke's giving you another clue to the answer to the question. And from the letter to the Galatians, the last two verses, it's Galatians 6, 17, and 18. It's on page 233. Galatians 6, beginning with the 17th verse, letter of the Apostle Paul, of course. From now on, let no one make trouble for me. For I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. disdain God's name hold in reverence nor take it in vain be thoughtful and earnest kind hearted and true look ever to Jesus he Ask the Savior to help you. 
Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to guide you. He will carry you through. To him that overcometh, God giveth the crown. Through faith we will conquer, through often cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. Look ever to Jesus, he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. If the young folks would come forward, we've got a word for them this morning. Michael, Eleanor, good to see you both this morning. Very good. All right, it's raining out today. Do you guys like the rain? Mm -hmm. You like the rain? Eleanor, do you like I the rain? I have an umbrella. Yeah, we have umbrellas to fend the rain off. Which you like better, rain or sunshine? I like rain. You like rain? There we go. Man after my own heart. Eleanor, what about you? Rain or sunshine? Mommy, why are they smacking my way? Oh. <laughs> That's to let you know I'm to recognize that you're here. Right. Eleanor, did you like sunshine a little better than rain? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Some of us like rain. Some of us like sunshine. God gives us both, right? God causes it to rain, and God causes the sun to shine, and you know what? God's with us, looking after us, whether it rains or whether the sun shines. So let's say thank you to God for that, shall we? All right, you can get it in just a second. Let's say a prayer. Our God, we thank you for sending rain and sunshine and for being with us in both conditions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to see you both. Can you recover your shoes, Eleanor? There's one. There's the other. Mom might check whether they're on the right feet. <laughs> Rain and sunshine, we use them as metaphors, right? Use them as metaphors for what comes at us in this life. The uh, title of the sermon, by the way, is How Much Can It Rain? And metaphorically, sometimes it can rain pretty hard in our lives, can it? Sometimes it's also clearly God, not always. Luther was singing, having us sing about when Satan's behind the rain, but sometimes it's God who's behind the rain in our lives. Now, of course, the Lord Jesus also brings the sun into our lives. And you have experienced, have you not, the love, joy, and peace that Jesus brings into our lives. But Jesus also brings the rain, struggles, and challenges. It's raining in Elijah's life in our text from Kings, also raining pretty hard in the lives of the Gerasenes as they discovered that those pigs they were counting on for food are now in the bottom of the lake. 
And hasn't there been some rain sent by God into the life of the Apostle Paul? Isn't that what's behind his statement? I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. He means it literally. Paul's body is scarred with the wounds he has suffered for preaching the gospel. So scars of beatings, whippings, and stonings are what he calls the marks of Jesus branded on my body. Was Paul's life easier or harder with Jesus in it? How hard did it rain in Paul's life because he served Jesus? Elijah is fleeing for his life because he has been zealous for God. He has contested with and killed some of the prophets of the Canaanite god Baal. Queen Jezebel, the champion of Baal's prophets in Israel, sends a curse-bearing messenger to Elijah. The curse is this, you, Elijah, killed my prophets. I, Jezebel, swear that by this time tomorrow, you will be like them, dead. Elijah flees for his life out into the wilderness. There in the wilderness, he tells God, I've had enough of this prophet business. Please just let me die. Is life easier with God in it or without? How hard is it raining in Elijah's life because God is in Elijah's life? The Gerasene townspeople figure life is better without Jesus. Jesus drives a legion of demons out of a possessed neighbor of theirs. They don't approve. As an aside here, a question that tends to come up for us in a text like this is, what's a demon? Are demons real or are demons just the way those folks back then explained behavior they didn't understand? Things that we would now explain in different terms, medical terms, psychiatric terms. They saw a demon-possessed person. We see a person who is mentally ill. Mental illness touches many lives, and clearly we have a better understanding of it than they did. But I think there are demons also, evil spiritual beings. But whatever you think about demons, don't miss the point of the text. There is something evil and powerful at work here, something beyond human control. This unfortunate man has been taken over by something he can neither comprehend nor counter, something beyond his control, beyond the control of the community, beyond human control. The man is possessed by something evil that neither he nor the community in which he lives can understand or counter. And one of the points of this text is that human life is fragile and can be easily derailed yours included. There are powers out there, evil powers, that are beyond our control. And this man has been undone by those evil powers. But certainly another point of this text is this. Jesus is more powerful still. Jesus drives the demons out. The power of Jesus is greater than the evil powers that seek to destroy our lives. The power of Jesus is greater than any power that seeks to undo you. When Luke tells us how Jesus overpowers and destroys the evil that has taken over the life of the demon-possessed man, Luke is giving us a look at the power of God that works through Jesus. But that's not what the local population sees. They see Jesus upsetting the apple cart. They see the man restored, but they also see that his restoration has cost them their pigs, they decide they prefer life the way it was, the way it was before Jesus got involved. They prefer their pigs in the pen, not in the bottom of the lake. And if the cost of pigs in the pen is a demon-possessed person or two, then so be it. Life may not have been perfect before Jesus came by, but it was good enough. The Gerasenes figured that they were better off before Jesus. They are afraid of Jesus, and they ask him to leave. So Jesus gets back into the boat and leaves. Is life easier with or without Jesus in it? 
The Gerasenes ask Jesus to leave, and he does, but that's not the end of the story. The man who Jesus has restored asks if he can go with Jesus. He understandably wants to leave the community that preferred pigs to him, and he wants to join the disciples who travel with Jesus. Jesus says no. He tells the man to return to his community there to tell the story of what God has done for him. And Luke tells us that the man obeys. He goes back to the town and tells the story about Jesus. Jesus is sending this guy to the townspeople who have already rejected Jesus and who were willing to throw this man under the bus. Jesus sends him to the townspeople to tell them about what Jesus has done for him. And every time the man tells them about what Jesus has done for them, what are they going to remember? Those pigs in the bottom of the lake. They're going to remember that this Jesus cost them their pigs. This man does not have an easy task, a task made even more challenging because this is a Gentile town. Jews didn't eat pigs, right? This is the eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, Gentile country. So this Gentile man is called to proclaim the Jewish Jesus to Gentiles who have already rejected Jesus once. Life with Jesus tends to be challenging. Both the Elijah story and the Gerasene story are about God's use of his people in the confrontation with evil. Both Elijah and the Gerasene man seek to avoid the confrontation. Elijah wants to retire from the prophet business. The Gerasene man wants to leave his we prefer the pigs and we don't care about Jesus, neighbors behind. Elijah is going to journey to the mountain of God for an encounter with God, and God will remind him that he is God's prophet for God's people, and God expects him to carry out that task. God expects Elijah to go back and guide God's people in their battle with evil and to quit hanging around mountaintops. Jesus tells the Gerasene man to confront the evil in his community that caused them to prefer pigs over him. Both Elijah and the Jesus restored man are sent back into the fray, back into a confrontation with evil. If you want Jesus in your life, you'll be taken care of by Jesus, but don't make self-care the focus of your Christian life. A part of it, yes, but not the focus. What Jesus wants from you is to live your life as a participation in Jesus' struggle against the forces of evil. Jesus wants us to confront the forces of evil, what is not right in our neighbor's lives, what is not right in our culture, what is not right in our own lives. Jesus wants us to confront evil with the gospel. So what role or roles is it that Jesus is asking you to play? What role is Jesus calling you to undertake in the struggle against evil? Are you struggling against the evil that is in your own soul? Or have you made accommodation with that evil? Are you challenging the evil that is in our culture? Or have you shrugged your shoulders and said, that's just the way it is. What can I do about it? Pray about it. That's what you can do. Pray about it, think about it, and then follow Jesus into the fray. And if you are nicked by the struggle, we will only get nicked, as opposed to the many near-death encounters the apostle had. When you do pick up some wounds in the struggle against evil, understand them like the apostle as the marks of Jesus branded onto your body and into your soul. By the way, it appears that the Gerasene man, freed of his demons, did what Jesus asked of him. He told the story of Jesus to his neighbors, and his telling bore fruit because when Jesus comes back to that country, he 
He is greeted by great crowds, anxious to hear his teaching and experience his miracles. Jesus came back. One of the miracles of the loaves and fishes occurs on the same eastern shore of the Sea of Galilee, Gentile country. Jesus feeds the multitudes that come to hear and see him, multitudes that appear to be the fruit of the proclamation of the gospel by the Gerasene man Jesus restored to his right mind. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, evil comes after us. Restore us to our right minds. Fill us with your spirit that we might follow you out into the battle against evil in our own lives, in our neighborhoods, in our country, in the world, in the church. Our God, help us to follow Jesus in the battle against evil, taking up the weapon he used, the cross. We pray in his name. Amen. Please rise and join in singing Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. It's Red 456. say what we believe as Christians using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on the back inside cover of the red hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
And now as we come to our God in prayer, are there prayer requests you would raise up? Lippincott family. Thank you. Heather. So the Walker family? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The Walker family. Others? Steve? Ken? Ken? Carl? Nancy. Nancy? Any others? Let us come before God in prayer. Our God, we thank you for sending Jesus into the world and into our lives. And we thank you for the many blessings which he brings to us. We thank you for the hope, joy, and love with which he fills us. We thank you that he has given us brothers and sisters in Christ to support us and to love us and to care for us and to lift us up when we fall down. We thank you also that he has given us work to do, the confrontation with evil, be with us, help us to, to discern what the evil is, both within us and without. Help us to be careful not to allow our culture, whether from the left or the right, to define what the evil is. But let us turn to you and listen to you and through you understand what is evil and how it is we are to combat it. For we are to combat evil by walking in the way of the cross the way of obedience to you and service and love to others. Help us to remember that. Our confrontation with evil is a confrontation with the gospel of love. And our God, help us to carry that gospel of love and service out into the world, this world where there is clearly so much that is evil, so much that is not right, whether it be war or poverty or hunger or the destruction of the earth and its ecosystems, our God, there is much in this world that is not right. Help us to take up the struggle against that evil using the way of the cross. And our God, we lift up to you now those we know also need Jesus and his cross in their lives. We lift up to you the Lippincott family, the Walker family, we lift up Ken and Nancy, Carl's mom. We pray for Sandra, Norman, Loretta, Chelsea, Judy's family, Jim and Marilyn, Gary, Bruce and Jill, Megan, Andy, Tree, Dawn and the Atkinson family, Tim and Christy, Will, Charlotte and her family, Thelma, Albie and Jane, Joan, Jay, Eric, Laura, Barb. We lift up our law enforcement and military personnel. We pray for Bob and Celeste Bercy, Bob and Laura Ingling, Tom and Nancy Dixon, Phyllis Kelty, Charlie Swiernick, Wes and Bertha Kennedy, Louise Smith, Beverly Bader, Joanne and Ben Banks. And our God, we pray to you now in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. And now for the work of the congregation, do we have any announcements this morning? Tom?
Okay, great. So Christian Caring Center is on the 24th, and uh, I would remind you again that Tom has asked us to uh, uh, bring in food because the stocks are low at the Christian Caring Center. So if you get a chance, put aside and notice some of you have done it. Bring in some food and stick it on the table there. Any other announcements this morning? Uh, take a look at the back of the bulletin. We've got the usual calendar on there. Elders, I would remind you that we meet via Zoom on Monday. And then I've got to go down to Oak Grove for their session meeting on Tuesday. VBS is on there as well. Good enough on the announcements. Very good. Let me then um, thank you. I know you do struggle against evil. I know you also give in sometimes. And I know you don't always struggle as hard as you should. It's, it's a challenge for us to confront evil both in our own lives and the evil that comes at us from outside of ourselves. But I thank you that you have taken up the struggle, remember, to fight using the weapons of Jesus, not the weapons of the world. To use the weapons of the world is to have already lost the battle. Anyway, thank you for your efforts. I want to send you on your way now with a benediction. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Go in the grace and peace of God and singing. Oh, I forgot to put it in. Humming. <laughs>